Hey everyone, this is Matt Perez, and welcome to video four in our SOLIDWORKS API Project Tracker series. Now, we've already covered a lot of very crucial information. We looked at the overall project, the scope of what we wanted to do. Then we started accessing the API help file, looking for information about custom properties. We saw that there are multiple ways that we can access this using the I configuration interface. We also can use the model doc extension interface, which is the method that we chose using the I model doc two and model doc extension. Then we used the custom property manager access which we declared our custom prop MGR as sldworks.customPropertyManager. With that interface, we're able to use get5 to get the information that we need, and we also were able to use add3 to add that custom property information. Now, as this program runs through, it gathers this information. But right now, if this information's in the file, then everything's fine, but also automatically tries to add this information. Now, of course, it's only gonna add it if it's new. That was our stipulation here. And if we go back to, for instance, this time tracker test file, we have project name, project number, MLC. Let's go ahead and just change that. We'll just change it to say video. And then you see that it's 728543. If we run this as the active document and we run our code, we go ahead and we check our file, you see that it did not alter these properties because they were not new values. So it's good information. We know that that line of code can still be in there, but we still don't want to just leave it hanging out there. What we want to do is we want to add some conditional statements. So we know that these return values are going to be equal to one if these properties do not exist. So that gives us a great segue into using these if statements and figuring out how we can work around this, this kind of information, whether or not these values exist. So as our program goes, we've set some values at the top and then it runs through the getting the custom property function. So the functionality here, we're getting our custom properties, which is fine. This is the perfect thing that we wanna do. Now, if these fail, then we wanna start some if statements. But the crucial thing is that we need to decide if we want to include both the project number and project name in one overall heading. Now we do have some functionality. We could say if number retval equals one, then do this, and if else do this, and then we can do it again with the name. If name retval equals one, then do this, and blah, 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 and so on. But we want to be able to handle both of them at the same time or one or the other. So I'm going to start an if statement that says if number retval equals one and name retval equals one, then. So if number retval equals one, that means that project number was not in the current active document. And so both these have to be true and the project name was not in the current document, then I wanna do whatever's down here. So we're gonna to have to put a little bit of code in here to figure out what we wanna do if both of those do not exist. Then we're gonna to have to handle each of them individually. That's where an else if statement comes from. And then we're gonna do if number retval equals one, then do something else in here. And then we're gonna to have to do another else if name retval equals one, then do something else, and then we're gonna have an end if at the bottom. All right, so now we have to handle the something, the whatever's going on inside of here. All right, so if number retval does not exist and name retval does not exist, we wanna tell the user, we wanna let the user know that that value isn't here, it doesn't, it doesn't exist, so we need to figure out what to do. So what I'm gonna do is swapp dot send msg to user2. Now this allows us to send a message to the user and have some sort of interaction with them. Now in this case, I'm only gonna put a message and I'm gonna only give them the option to click one button, okay. But we could also use send msg to user2 to give them a yes, no, yes, no, cancel, try again. Uh, we have a lot of different options in there. But for me, we're gonna do send msg to user2 and we're gonna say project name and number custom properties are missing and will be added to the active document. So right now we're telling the user that these values are missing. They're not in the current file that we're trying to work with, but we're gonna add them. 
Now, we could also go in and give the user an option to, to add them or not add them or whatever, but in this case, we just want to go and add them because we know that with this project tracker, we need those values. We need to have them, and that's how we're going to end up tracking things. The next thing is an icon. Now, if you look up send MSG to user to in the SOLIDWORKS API help file, you'll get a list of enumerations. Now, in this case, I know that I have the option to do SWMB warning. Now, this is going to put up a warning sign. We also could do SWMB question. There's quite a few of these, but for our case, we're going to do SWMB warning, and we're going to do SWMB OK for the type of button. So now this will pop up a message to the user. So let's go ahead and save this and let's run it and see what happens. So what I need is a part that does not have either of these custom properties. So I'm going to use this part seven again, but I'm just going to delete those properties, go back in and run my code. So here's the message that we just put in. This is send MSG to user two. the warning SWMB warning gave me this icon right here. If we did SWMB question, it would give us a question mark. And again, there are a few more of those. We can do the red circle with an X through it and so on. It gives us the text that we typed in, project name and, and number custom properties are missing and will be added to the active document. The only thing the user can do is hit OK. Now, of course, they didn't get added to the active document because we didn't want them to, but we left these lines of code down here. So if we actually go back and we check that part, they were added anyways. So we need to be careful where code it is and where it happens. So what I want to do in my code is come back up and I want to take both of these lines of code and I'm going to bring them and put them right under this, this little line of code here to send the message to the user. All right. So now if name retval and number retval equal one, so if they're missing from our current active document, we're going to tell the user that they're missing and that we're going to add those properties and then we're going to go ahead and add them for them. All right, let's go ahead and test this. Let's check our part file, part seven, make sure that we did delete both of those properties and let's go ahead and run our code and make sure that it's working. Project name and number custom properties are missing. They will be added, hit okay. It doesn't look like anything happens, but if we check the file, we can see that those custom properties are now added. I'm going to go ahead and delete just one of them. I'm going to delete project name because now we need to start handling the else if sections. So I deleted the name, which means that if one of them is missing, it's not going to run this bit of code here. It's going to come down and look at the next else if statement. It's going to say else if number ret value equals one, then do this. Now I deleted the name. So what we want to make sure is that we skip over this section and then it handles this section. But what we need to do is handle the exact same thing again. So I'm going to copy this information and I want to put it down here. All right. So what I need here is if the number return value equals one. So if the project number custom property is missing, then we need to tell them that the project number custom property is missing and will be added to the active document. Again, they only have the option to hit OK. And then we're going to be adding project number. OK, and then we want to go ahead and again, copy both of these come down and we'll paste them in here. So now in this case, we want to say that the project name is missing. In this case up here, we want to say that the project number is missing. It's very easy to get lost in this code. So you have to be real careful when you're adding these values. Project name, we'll go ahead and put MLC in here. So now at this point, it's going to run through this statement if both of them are missing, it'll do this, it'll add both of them. If just the number's missing, it'll add project number. If just the name is missing, it'll add project name. Let's save this and let's double check our part file and see that we only have project number in here. So if we run the code, it should pop up and it should tell us that the project name is missing and it should add it. Let's go ahead and play. Project name custom property is missing and will be added to the active document. Of course, I misspelled property in here. We'll go ahead and change that and let's double check our file. Now we should have two custom properties. All right, so project name was added. 
let's go ahead and delete project number and make sure that functionality works as well. So if we replay this, now it tells us that project number custom property is missing. If we double check our part file, we see that we now have project name and project number are both added again. Now you will notice that the order is different based on which one I deleted. Uh, in that case, it doesn't really matter. We don't really care what the ID number is, the instance is, whether it's one or two. We just need this specific property, this specific property, and the values that are saved in them. So back in our code, it looks like everything is working smoothly. We have get custom property. So if we check it, so right now part seven has both custom properties. It has project name and has project number. The last thing we need to do is check to make sure if it has both of these. So if these values actually equal two, which do not equal one, then none of this stuff is going to happen. Just to make sure that 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 is true, let's go ahead and change some of these values just so we know that there is a difference in here and we'll put MLC2 MLC2 and let's go ahead and play through it nothing happened at this point and if we check our current active document these values did not change now how do you know that nothing actually happened well at that point in time that's where it's good to go ahead and put a stop in the program so if we play through it it's gonna stop at this point we can hold the cursor over the number and name return values and see that they both equal two. So because number ret val equals two and name ret val equals two, it doesn't actually fall into this line. And we can also hold the cursor over proj number and proj name and we see that this is equal to MLC and this was equal to 11111. As we run through this file, we know that these values are populated from the file that these values, the return values, are equal to 2 in this case because it was actually able to populate them. So now we have a pretty good handle on accessing custom properties. We know that if they're in the file, we can get them. We can store their values into these two strings that we created. We know that if they're not there, we have an if else if statement where we can test the return values and then we can go through, tell the user that they're going to be adding some, some values here. And then if only one of them is missing, we know that this functionality works as well. Further down the road, we are, of course, going to get rid of these options here. We're going to ask the user for input rather than doing it this way. Now, we can very easily do that with some pop-ups, with some message boxes. There is an, a user input option that we can use. Uh, but for right now, I'm not going to be too worried about that. I'm more worried about the functionality of everything we're doing. We know that if instead of 12222 two, two, two in quotes here, if we actually use something such as proj number, proj num, if we put that value in here, it'll populate it with that. So everything is working, everything is solid up to this point. So really we don't need to worry too much about the user interaction just yet. That'll come more in the user form section of things. We still need to access a few more pieces of data from the file. We need to access the file path. It's going to be very important for us. We're going to want to save that information. So in the next video, we're going to talk about how to access that information. It's going to be pretty easy, pretty straightforward compared to what we actually did here with the custom properties. But I still want to save it for its own video. But if you guys have any questions on anything you've seen here dealing with these custom properties in SOLIDWORKS API, please shoot us an email, solidworksupport at mlc-cad.com, and we'll see you next time.